to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to open this up the right way. Uh, you know what, guys? <laughs> if you haven't seen it, I wish I would have done this already. If you haven't seen our overly dramatized trailer of our last year's 2018 workshops where we have... All the testimonials of 2018 participants. You gotta watch that. Yeah, it's I should have awesome. included that already. Hey, everybody! Welcome back to another Photog Adventures podcast. I'm Aaron King. I'm Brendan Porter. With families and day jobs, we know it's hard to find time to get out there with your camera. So Brendan awesome. and I joined together and made the commitment to go out consistently and build up our landscape and astrophotography portfolios. We live in Utah and are lucky to have so many beautiful landscapes all around us. Not only do we have five national parks right here in Utah, but we are only a day or less drive away from 30 other national parks. So we created PhotogAdventures.com, this podcast, and our YouTube channel to chronicle our adventures. Come along with us to amazing places and learn from our mistakes and our successes. We hope that you will get out there too and have a photog adventure of your own. It's episode 990. Wow. 90. And we took 15 days to do it because it's been 16 days since our last podcast. Uh -oh. <sighs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I kept telling Brendan, you're like, don't worry, I got this. I'm going to go do an Astrophotog podcast because I got this one on focus that I want right, to do. Fill it in. And then I get working on that, and you can't see it on this board, but there's a lot of things that are on our plate, and we leave within, what, 30 hours of now, we're going to Faroe Islands. Yeah. So we Thursday are. Thursday morning. Yeah. Everything's piling cool. up. Piling, yeah. piling up. But we're stoked to be here. Episode 90, we're joined by a guest that we've been trying to get since, what, is it October, November that we were there last? I was stuck. Yeah, yeah, it was about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. We've been trying to get Clarence Spencer. If you're listening to this in your car, go to our YouTube channel and watch it because it's live on our YouTube tonight and you can watch this in a replay on our YouTube channel anytime. So we brought Clarence Spencer on to talk about these camera bodies that have been modified for astrophotography. So we're going to learn about this. I'm going to pose the question of whether I should do it with my Canon 60, which is the second body for me. And Brendan's going to bring all his gear knowledge into wondering, is this wise choice, awesome choice, beneficial to us to do as Milky Way photographers? And we're going to find that out tonight. So let's get to it. All right. So let's start off with what's new with you, Brendan. Uh, I took my family out to the Wedge Overlook uh, yesterday. Uh, it was pretty awesome. Little cool. Utah Grand very Canyon? Cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was the cool. first time out there. And so uh, my wife had heard me talk about it for the last two years, like nonstop. So <laughs> she's like, let's go out there. That sounds fun. I'm like, okay, it's all dirt road to get out there. But <laughs> she, she didn't care. talking about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the kids had a blast hiking around all the rocks. And we brought our dog cool. with us. And it was a lot of fun. It's oh, good trip. Oh, cool. Oh. Awesome. Did you get any photography with your family out there? I did, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Posted some stuff on my Instagram account. So if you want to look up Brendan Por Porter on Instagram, I posted a picture of the Little Grand Canyon. Two pictures today, actually. So cool. yeah. Two pictures. Cool. Sweet. I didn't see them yet. Okay. Yeah, I cool. got to check that out. Awesome. So, Clarence, what's up with you? What's new with you? We do that typically about what's new in photography, sure. yeah. what you've been doing, or maybe you just want to complain that, hey, why is it the Nikon mirrorless have two cards? Yeah, really. So, you can <laughs> tell me anything you want. Well, and I hear the Canon mirrorless only has one slot, too. So that's, What? Yes. That's what I heard. <sighs> well, I don't care Followers. either. The thing is, is that for professional use, I get it. You want to use the Sony sure. in a professional. Yeah. If you're going to use it for, yeah. I don't know. I just, I've only had two card slots for a year, half a year now. So, I'm okay. Mm, yeah. I'm all right. I'll survive. No, I, on the mirrorless side of things, I've noticed the Canon uh, new mount. They have a new lens. It's a 28 to 70 f 2.0. Yeah, it should be very cool. But is that the new mount uh, for their mirrorless. The that's mirrorless out? system has a new mount. One of the really cool thing I noticed with the Canon mirrorless, they have an adapter that you can use your old lenses. It's still like the Nikon. Oh right. But yeah. It, but it has a drop-in filter slot. Oh. So you can so you put, put like filters. a circular filter inside there. You like can. You, you can put ND filters. Anything. In, it's in between the lens and the camera body, which that is very cool for what we do as well. Mm. So for like a modified camera, we'll get into this later with infrared Ooh, photography cool. or really nice. lots of cool things. Or you could even fit um, light pollution filters very easily in there. You know. So there's a lot of cool things about that. You nice. think about like this lens, it's the Canon 11 to 24. You have to have the huge filters to put anything on that. But with that little drop-in filter slot, right. it's going to be super convenient. So. And probably not too much money either because it's only yeah, they're gonna be tiny. this big. Right, so. right. Yep. Awesome. So it'll be very cool. So then photo photographically, you went out somewhere recently that you went as. Do you have that picture in this folder of stuff? No, I don't. I don't. Oh, okay. That's, I, I should have thought of that. Yeah, I didn't, didn't really <laughs> consider that. But where'd you go? What'd you do? Um, you know, Friday we went and shot some uh, some images up in the Uintas and got uh, there's one shot on here on the card that we'll show that 
a good reflection Milky Way image that, you know, it was a good time. Good, kind of the last month to get the Milky Way, to get the core before it dives. And so, mm. you know, I'm going to try to get out again this weekend, but yeah. Right. I mean, we obviously have the opportunity to go out all the way through to November, but you've got like 12 minutes in November. Right, right. And you have yeah. an hour almost in October. <laughs> right. We went out with our buddy. Oh, you know what? I'm gone. The stupid trackpad has caused me to go backwards from our live stream viewing the live control room. So now I'm just trying to fix that. And I accidentally started playing the video. Hopefully the desktop audio is turned off. Okay, good. It probably didn't play any of that. Cool. Sweet. So here we go. I have done <clears throat> what for photography lately? I've just been editing at my computer desk and not even editing my pictures. I've been <laughs> editing videos. Those of you who really love the Milky Way chase and love following us on that, oh, well, yeah. we're finally getting all those videos out. I have night 13 ready to go, mm -hmm. but we're waiting for Kurt Kais. He's already, already given me his picture, and I'm going to okay. put that in there and not release it without Kirk's work. So yeah, just waiting yeah. on Kirk's work and putting it out there today. It's going to be awesome. And just working on that nonstop. And, man, seeing Band in Sunset and seeing the and in Milky Way it makes me so excited to get back out there. I know. From the last and, video from number 12. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so I've got to announce once again, guys, we are doing the listener adventure in Oregon. For those of you who came with us last time, we had Kyle. We had John. Mm -hmm. We had... Did anyone else besides John and Kyle show up? Mm, I think it was I John, Kyle, so. Kirk, Drew, ourselves, uh -huh. and... That was it. That I was think. it. Yeah. So we have a listener adventure that we do once or twice a year, which usually is like five or six. And this year we've done hmm. zero up until now. Yeah. Well, well that went by way too fast. Busy. It's <sighs> been a fast year. Yeah. Doing workshops is throwing us off. Huh, we don't do listener adventures for free. Now, again, they're for free, completely free. And I'll put the information up more so you know the dates. But we're going to meet up Monday, uh, November, is it the 6th on that day? Um, I don't have any of my devices for a calendar, but it's the second week of November. We're out there on the coastline of, of Oregon, and, and explain while I pull up this date, Brendan, what it ended up going like last year. So we, so this year we've got it planned from the 3rd to the 10th, so last year what we did is we, uh, met, we met in Portland, kind of all piled into one car that was going to be going the whole trip, and we just drove all the way down to the coast, or not to the coast, to the, to the uh, border of California and Oregon, started with the Redwoods, and then kind of just went up the coast and did uh, you know beach as we went as we googled stuff and looked up weather and looked up uh, different areas and thought and we kind of all just kind of came to a consensus of what areas we wanted to hit yeah next. Like, where do you want to go next let's try this let's try that <clears throat> always wanted to see thor's will okay let's yeah. do thor's will tomorrow night it was very it was fluid really cool. very open and so if you want to participate you can participate the whole trip here's a quick example of the trip those of you who are on live you can see you know there's the locations that we ended up going we started off in portland went all the way down to crescent city brookings bandon yahats newport manzanita and then we hit a ton of places right there yeah. in the middle of it yeah and so the dates are are November 5th you meet with us on Monday in Brookings we're gonna be down there in Brookings near the Samuel H. Boardman area for Secret Beach and we'll spend our first sunset out there at Secret Beach and then from there we're gonna go anywhere we're gonna go our way up north come back go north come back go north and then all whatever we need to do to have really good skies for landscape photography we will have a chance for like eight minutes of Milky Way core visibility out there over the ocean. And we might try for it. We might not, depending on the clouds. Okay. But yeah. it's an opportunity. <laughs> Listener adventure out in Oregon. Right this year, we're joined by our third member of Photog Adventures with James Kelly from Scotland. He is joining us. Mm, so we're going to have awesome. Kirk, Drew, James, myself, Brendan, most likely John. I bet Kyle will not sleep again and drive all the way down there to join us for a sunrise. And so... Yeah, we'll, we'll have at least all these guys come join us. It doesn't matter if you're good at photography. It doesn't matter if you just like to see Thor as well. Come hang out with us completely free. You find your own way there. Find your own place to sleep. Find your own place to hang out. And we'll just do photography. Yeah. It's a blast. So we do that whole week. More information coming. Listener Adventure down the Oregon coast. Yeah. Sounds awesome. So let's get into the issue at hand. I'm doing Milky Way photography. I love it. I don't really want to go into long one-minute tracked Milky Way shots to bring up the color because I know that I'm going to clip my colors if I do anything too high on the ISO. I've already lost these color. These stars, these color, this uh, Lagoon, Lagoon Nebula. I mean, how do I bring some color back into my Milky Way photography? Do you have an answer for that, Clarence? 
Well, one way obviously is a modified camera. Um, there's a couple of different um, choices that we offer. Three, but really two that are that are more prominent or more common. Um, the two cameras here, this one's, I don't know if you can see the little red labels on here, but... Let me bring the camera up. <clears throat> but um, this one's, I've got a little sticker on here. This one's modified with a visible plus H alpha filter, which basically allows the camera to see or capture a normal image but we've expanded the sensitivity into the hydrogen alpha part Did of the spectrum. Did you turn off your phone, Brendan, by chance? So, Sorry, we're just we going to make it? sure that <clears throat> Brendan's phone is back. So what's happening is this display that Brendan's phone is on has changed. And so now we've got a different display icon to swap it out with. Oh, screen mirroring turned off for some reason. Let me make sure it's turned back on. <clears throat> okay, so maybe it will be back on once you do the sharing again. So we just got Brendan's phone that is a separate camera during this live feed, and he was going to show you guys the red marks above these cameras. And so he has to share his screen with the computer. Have mm -hmm. you done the, the code yet? Okay, and then oh, click off go. of that, and you're good to go. I think we are so solid. Okay, weird. There you go. I wonder why that did that. And there's the legs. That's <laughs> me. <laughs> There you go. Is it is it reverse on you now? Because Brendan now is showing there us a nice close up view of all the hairs on Clarence's <laughs> yes. legs. <laughs> okay, so back to what are the signals? Okay, so so this camera we've installed. Well, basically we we take the sensor out of the camera and remove the filter off of the front of the imaging sensor, the main imaging sensor, and then we reinstall something else in its place. It's all done in a clean environment, so there's no dust trapped underneath there, and it's all done static-free. You know, we've we've been trained; we know how to do this stuff very well. But um, this camera has a filter installed that will allow the, it to capture normal visible images like an unmodified camera, but it's expanding the sensitivity into the hydrogen alpha side of the spectrum as well, which is your red nebulae. You know, the, the, the reds in, you know, you'll get your Lagoon Nebula, Trifid, all of those really popping and other areas in the Milky Way as well that will pop. The so other before camera, you go, go on to that one, I've <clears throat> got to ask, you said you replace the imaging sensor. No, we replace the filter, the, what's called oh. the low-pass filter. Okay. So on the front of the imaging sensor, there's a filter called the low-pass filter, and that blocks infrared light. And ultraviolet light. So that's what I missed while you're right. saying Sorry. that. Sorry, I, I probably so missed that. So that gets but... replaced or removed. It's removed, and then we replace something or put something else in its place. Is it basically mm -hmm. a see-through glass plastic that's nope, just going to keep it? No, that's what the other camera is. But, ah. but the the visible plus H alpha camera um, has one a filter that blocks infrared light only right down to the edge of the visible or the hydrogen alpha part of the spectrum. So it increases sensitivity of the of all of the light capturing of the camera by about ten percent. Okay, um, which isn't huge, but it's in the right areas. So you're getting those reds out of the nebulae. That's that, why you mentioned the nebulosity that's showing up more. Correct. We have visual <clears throat> examples of both of these guys, so we're going to go through sure. quickly and talk about the next type of modification. <clears throat> then we'll go back and look at them individually and show you guys the pictures up on the screen. So the other camera is is what's called a full spectrum modification. So we remove that low, that original uh, OEM um, low pass filter from the camera, and then we install a clear filter in there. So the camera can see or capture uh, or is sensitive to all of the light possible that the imaging sensor is capable oh. of seeing. So that gets into the near infrared side of the spectrum. The benefits of this modification is is you're almost doubling the light capturing capability. So you're you're gaining a lot of, of sensitivity and luminosity and in color. Um, it's more important with this camera to use a custom white balance to keep the colors as natural as possible. That's the o really the only negative to a full spectrum mod in the end result is it can mess with your colors a little, but that's easily corrected with a custom white balance and then obviously some refinement in post-processing. Now, before we move on, the, the full spectrum camera, since it's now sensitive to infrared light, you can also use it as an infrared camera. Like if you've ever seen infrared imaging during the day, you can install an infrared filter such as this, and it will see right through this black filter, 
yeah, that your eyes can't dark. see through, but mm. the camera will see through it, and you can photograph in infrared as well. So very it's, cool. it's a very versatile way to go. So when you say to go. photograph in infrared, it's going to make everything visible to only the infrared side of the spectrum. So Correct. you're only seeing the light bouncing off of that subject that is infrared light. Correct. Very so correct. the colors yeah. are completely different than you're used to. That's correct. But you still get lights and darks and contrasts and shadows. Yep. You see all of that? Yep. And there are, there are six, six or seven different types of infrared filters, some with varying degrees of color allowed. Mm. So there's lots of different creative things to do with infrared photography. And if you didn't use that <clears throat> black filter but you use your modified one, what would it look like? Why do you need that black filter? Well, if you don't have any filters at all on it, then your images are going to be very reddish because it's getting oh. tons of infrared light in there. That's the mm, other red. filter. Right. This filter is what's called a UVIR hot mirror filter. This blocks ultraviolet light and infrared light. It's the same qualities as the filter that is removed out of the camera. Okay. So if you put this on your lens, you can shoot the camera as a normal everyday camera. So well, I wait shot, a sec, what? You can actually bring this camera back to course. looking like mm -hmm. the regular mm -hmm. camera yeah, so, it was. So this camera, I shot my sister's wedding with it, with this filter. Oh. I do portraits, <laughs> anything I want with the same camera just by shooting with this filter. Nice. Um, put it on okay. auto white balance. It works just like before the modification. Exactly same coloring, everything. So it work, works perfectly. And based on what lens you have, sharpness. It has nothing to everything. do with changing nothing. sharpness. It doesn't do it's anything there. The no. color information is back to true. Correct. And one question huh. we always get is, um, after the modification, what lenses can you use? Well, we do a universal calibration. So all of your lenses will work perfectly fine. Nothing changes about no your camera issue. that changes no. your lens use. No, there there are some you know some people that will do their mods on their own at home and you know kind of hack them up, and then the focus will be off. So you're manually focusing mm. everything. Where we oh. will calibrate it, the focusing system in the camera to where everything will work fine. So I can shoot you know my 11 to 24 all the way out to a 600 millimeter, and the focus is sharp no matter what we're doing what lens you're shooting with and it doesn't affect when you're putting filters on the lens either because the the focusing system is looking through the filter and right, corrects for that right so wow okay nice. so you're thinking about doing a modification you don't have to set like a 60 and say well i'll never use it for my time lapses again correct except for milky way time lapses right. because it's it can go right back to being a landscape camera correct mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's get into some of the picture examples because I think it's going to make sense to all of us. Those of us who glossed over all of that tech talk and thought, I'm really glad that he did that maneuver and not the other maneuver. I have no idea what you did. So we're going to talk about what the benefits are of having it happen. But just specifically, you are Spencer's cameras. You guys do these kind of modifications. How much would it cost to do the full spectrum visual light h alpha is that what that one is yeah so the visible plus h alpha mod visible is visible plus h alpha right for a full for a full frame canon is 350 350, 350 for the modification yeah. the full spectrum is 50 dollars less because the filter is cheaper on our cost so it's a okay. little bit less to go full spectrum hmm. Um, I did notice a question up there on white balance. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah. What the, kind of white balance would you recommend for a modded camera? So that, that's a really good question. The cameras, most of them, well, almost all of them will only go down to a 2500 Kelvin if you set the Kelvins manually. Okay. So I tried to go lower. So the best way to do it is to have it the camera do its own custom white balance. In Nikons, it's called a preset white balance. Oh, okay. Um, if you do that, you use a gray card or an Expo disc mm -hmm. out in full sunlight and the camera will force force itself down lower below 2500. Oh. So on average with a full spectrum a good custom white balance is around 2100, but there's more that the camera is doing when it does that automatic custom white balance. It's also tweaking the color channels a little. Mm. So you can correct for most of that in post, you know, by changing your your color temperature, but the camera is going to do a little better job for the most part because it's going right. to reduce the magentas or you know increase certain certain parts of the color channels to correct for that so okay usually your custom white balance that the camera does automatically will give you you know a, a great result right out of the camera and there's less to do in post right so it's going to be just better to do correct anyways. correct okay. i mean you know obviously i'm a firm believer that the best image you can get straight out of the camera the less work you do later and yeah. that ends up with a better end result absolutely so, so that's all good yeah <clears throat> Um, another question is, can you use that green filter for a Nikon D810A? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can okay. put that on any camera that's been modified, and it will correct the colors. Now, the D810A has some kind of uh, very specific firmware built into it, and, and so the, the white balancing uh, w may not be perfect on auto white balance, but by using that greenish or blue filter, set a custom white balance with it, and that will correct everything perfectly for you. 
Cool. Well, that's awesome. That question came from Kava because yeah. he's joining us down in a workshop next yeah, year. That's awesome. Cool. <laughs> hey, cool. Kava, Thanks so glad that you're joining us in the live production of the podcast. Yeah. This awesome. is awesome. So uh, we won't talk about specifically which one you're going to, but let's just say that you're going to love both of them. <laughs> Can't wait to have them along. Oh, man, is it not March yet in May and April? We have to go through winter still. I'm going to be miserable going through winter. <laughs> We have other things to do. <sighs> Thank keep goodness. us occupied. <laughs> <laughs> so let's bring up some of the pictures because right. these are really cool to see quickly. Well, the difference between the two, I we're blocking it from our view. You know, the one on the left is which one? That's the unmodified. That's just a normal camera on the left. <laughs> yes, from Kava. Yes. <laughs> so that's the normal unmodified camera altogether. And then someone who goes and gets the full spectrum Astro Modify, which is the one on this one that's a little cheaper to do. That's the difference you get already? Correct. Yeah, that's right out of the camera. Um, you can see there's... Both a, are raw images. These are not correct. processed. Non, non, non-processed oh, images. Okay. That makes it a little bit more impressive than it was already in my mind. Yeah. So you can see there's a lot more luminosity, especially. You're, you're gaining a lot of color, but the luminosity is, is really intense. Um, and it's very, you can bring out those colors very easily from the raw file just by increasing your saturation a t- a saturation. A yeah, touch. I mean, I can tell just by looking at it, there's so much more in the shadows there detail. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more green in well, the grass. Well, if you, yeah, if you look at the shoreline and the distance, you yeah. pick up all that extra light. That, yeah. That the Why does the reflection camera. seem clearer? Um, Did you bump your camera in the other example? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Those, in fact, that's that's two, two set, totally separate cameras. I took one shot, grabbed the other one, put it back on, same lens, <laughs> everything. You know, so wow. it, it's all identical. Just you know, maybe a two minute or three minute difference between right, shots. Right. You can see that the tree line, the stars moved a little between the two. Mm-hmm. So a very little time difference. Um, I think that's actually a plane in the left-hand picture. We didn't, I didn't touch anything in these images. <laughs> Just wanted them to be straight, you know, raw mm-hmm. images right out of mm-hmm. the camera. Okay, so. this is awesome. I'm going to work my mouse over to that screen so we can go to the next picture example. Yeah. So Dead this, Horse Point, this is, this is, is a shot. On? Yeah, this is a shot I did down in, at Dead Horse Point, obviously, in southern Utah uh, during our last um, trip down there in June. Um, that's actually an eight-image um, composite. It's not a stacked image. We didn't track anything. Those are all just single images. Uh, it's with a Rokinon 24 millimeter lens. Okay. Shot wide open. Um, I, wow. the, the foreground, well, I guess it is a composite in a way because the foreground is a longer exposure to bring that out because there was no moon. But as far as the Milky Way is concerned, that's, I think, five images almost looking straight up um, to get all of that, looking almost right down at my feet, looking straight up. Um, but that's a full spectrum camera, a little bit of post cleanup, uh, obviously, but um, you know, uh, custom white balance straight out of the camera. Mm. So that's, that's the colors. You can see there's a lot more reds. Uh, the Milky Way has a lot more light coming out of it with a full spectrum camera than an unmodified camera. Okay, so is this like a vertical panel? It is. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's just a vertical and panel. <laughs> right so you now, said about eight images you said? Correct. Were, okay. There's, I think, three for the foreground and five for the top part. Wow, that is um, great. You know, about 50% overlap, um, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. no tracking. You know, uh, I, my, you know, everybody has their own thing. Mm-hmm. Sure. My, my um, challenge with photography is single image, single exposure images. Yeah. That's I, what I, I, I love. Love to do. Yeah, me too. Um, this one, of course, is an eight-image, um, you know, panel. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, I have the trackers. I've done a lot of that stuff. And there's an image coming up where I tracked a bunch of uh, things. But um, you know, I, that's just my thing. I like doing single exposure images, um, and it's really easy, much easier to do with a modified camera. But if you if you take the um, benefits of the modified camera and apply it to your tracking systems and everything else that's out there, then you're just multiplying the, the added benefits. Wow. You know, just, just like an, un, <laughs> yeah. an unmodified camera. And that's a fantastic so, shot, man. That's oh, thank awesome. you. So I'm looking yeah. at all of the reds, and I think, okay, does that mean it was a full spectrum? That was a full spectrum. Uh-huh. So that full spectrum is, I mean, how do we clarify? There's full H alpha? What well, you this call? is visible plus H alpha. Visible only plus The full plus spectrum H-alpha. is full basically spectrum. a clear filter. It's a piece of quartz mm-hmm. that we install okay. in the camera. Mm-hmm. So it's and that's why it's bringing out a lot of that red. Yep. Yep, mm-hmm. you're getting a lot and of that. A lot of it. I mean, it looks like you've almost dodged red on top no, of your Milky there's, Way. There's none of that. There's none of that. You didn't I, paint pink on it. Nope. Nope, <laughs> I did not. It's no. just seeing that more clearly. No. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to the next picture then. This so is this, one this I've is seen the one before. we yeah, I shot this just gorgeous. last uh, July. 
No, this is um, Cliff Lake in the Uintas. Oh, there's so many dang lakes. Look, these oh, there's are. tons, yeah. There's a thousand <laughs> lakes up there. Oh, yeah. yeah. But this is at Cliff Lake during the Perseid meteor shower, so I did catch one up there Ooh, on the top. Oh, nice. Um, and that's Mars on the left hand. It was actually glowing, uh, putting, a, putting <laughs> yeah. a glow edge on that cloud, which was which very is cool. Fantastic. And you can see yeah. the, the smoke oh, down gosh. low on the horizon. That's from some of the oh, fires. And yeah, you yeah. can see that glowing edge right it's there. So yeah. beautiful. amazing. Yeah. But this, this is a single exposure image. Again, there's we had um, you know a little, one little lantern off to the right hand side. It's a, uh, a goal zero um, little lantern. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, just for a little bit of foreground lighting. That was a 25 second exposure at 3200 ISO. Um, and okay. if you think about that, it's only 3200 ISO. Wow. You know, most, most um, astro, you know, nightscape images with the Milky Way, you're 6400 ISO uh, or even higher, 10,000 ISO. Uh, this is shot with an Irix Firefly 2.4 oh. lens. So okay. it's, it's 2.4 is pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but for a single exposure image, it's pretty good. I, di I did, you know, I will admit, I photoshopped this a little. There's a little bit of, Oh my gosh, you, know, you what? Yeah, can you believe that? I know, I know. Out. I mean, whoever uses Photoshop. You know. <laughs> but no, so, it, you know, that was one image. Um, we were there with a couple other people. That oh one. Oh my gosh, the reflected pink. Yeah. This is too Ooh. much pink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's this amazing. Is, um, this is one I just did last Friday, this last Friday, last week. Uh, up in the Uintas again. This is an unnamed lake. I don't know. There's no name on the map for this, so I don't know what it's called. Mm. Um, it's in the same general Debris area. Debris field lake because yeah. it's got logs everywhere. Yeah, I sat the little lantern there off the distance on the left, and then there's one off to the left behind me as well to light the foreground a little no. bit. I wanted to light up the grass there in the distance. It was out in that little pond. It looks really lake. great. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Again, 3200 ISO, 25-second exposure. I did have to cr uh, crank up the exposure in Photoshop a little bit in that to bring it up to the brightness I wanted. I really wanted mm. to show the foreground well, so I, I did bring up the exposure in post for that. Nice. Sweet. Um, this one again up in the Uintas, just another single exposure. Okay, I got to get to this one. So this What's one... What's happening here? Oh, boy, I don't know if I can say. That's kind of the secret sauce, you know? <laughs> no, those the are... demons coming out of yeah, the lake? Yeah, no, those are glow sticks down in the water. <laughs> oh, just some little glow sticks. That's a cool idea. Um, <laughs> you know, but it's it creates a little... Those rocks are actually very small. They're only about three feet long. They look I don't much know if bigger. Your standard for rocks is the same standard I have. For well, rocks. three you know, feet long. Well, most people think rocks. they look huge, but oh, they, yeah, they're yeah, not. Yeah, they're like not got ten or fifteen feet. Yeah, that's yeah. maybe two feet deep of water there. That so. looks so gnarly and awesome. The way that you yeah. brought out the rocks in the water with the yeah. glow sticks, bringing this yellow green fell look to it. Yeah, yeah it turned out pretty cool. Wow. You understand what now that's, fell is. And yeah, that, that is just now. This is a full spectrum camera as well, so you can see the colors are very natural, very. You know, pleasing mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. very little Photoshop in this at all. Um, it was just a custom white balance right out of the camera. Single exposure image again. Um, there's nothing, you know, no stacking, no tracking. And, th and this was three years ago. I didn't even own a tracker till a year ago. Right, right. Um, but, um, you know, it was uh, shot in, I believe, in August okay. uh, of 2015. <clears throat> that's wow. awesome i mean the way that it brings out the colors and the reds i mean a lot of post-processing choices that you've made that might be different in all of our other sure, shots right. that'll bring out it differently and it's just the potential the awesome right. awesome mm. potential of doing and this one right here full, full or spectrum. visual full, this one is a full, full spectrum, spectrum still uh -huh. so the full Correct. spectrum one that i'm considering for the canon 60 so that i can still use mine with the potentially crazy expensive filter <laughs> i'm excited about the prospect of doing mm -hmm. something like that imagine the time lapse look and just be like whoa <clears throat> it's just, it'll look weird and, and mystical yeah. the whole time lapse right. of all the reds and pinks yeah i'm excited for that that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, there, there's some clouds moving in there, which adds some more depth and yeah. you know, more yep. dynamic feel to it. So I love I, the I meteor like blast. Yeah, yeah that was a lucky shot there. Here's a question from Mary Beth. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure someone asked this already. I was thinking about having this done to a D7000. It's a crop sensor, just to play with. Would a crop sensor still be decent to use? No one's asked it, Mary. So thank you so much, Mary Beth, for asking it. So can someone use a crop? Oh, of course. Yeah. I, in fact, I shoot a Canon 80D as well. Um, okay. You know, you, you have the benefits of full frame, of course, with a little cleaner image and, and things like that. But uh, crop sensors work extremely well. And, and you know, we, we may talk a little bit towards the end here how these cameras can be used for deep sky imaging with telescopes and, and telephoto lenses. And crop sensors are super popular for that as well. So, yeah, I don't, oh, and, and the D7000 is a phenomenal camera for that. 
That and the D7200 are really great crop sensors for Nikons. Definitely great. So cool. while we're in the topic, people are thinking now, can mine, can mine, especially your has-been camera, the camera you used to use until you upgraded. Right, right. So are there any cameras that you say, we can't do it to, don't send it our way? It's either a piece of junk, it's impossible, looks terrible, or just sure, to be break sure. it in the process of trying to do this doesn't work. Sure. Mm. Well, well, the big, the big bad news is there are some very high-end cameras out there that you can't do this to. Mm. You can do it to it. You can, you can modify them, but it creates problems. So oh, yeah. any of your Sony mirrorless cameras that are not a Mark I version, so Mark II, Mark III Sonys, the, the, the A7R Mark II, A7R Mark III, they have a design issue that if you modify it, it creates basically a, a light leak for oh, high yeah. ISO, okay. longer exposure uh, images. So for astro work, they're terrible for modification. Okay. Um, the but for normal infrared imaging, shorter ISO, lower ISO, shorter exposure, they work fine. It, basically, there's a sensor built into the shutter mechanism, so oh. it, it's an infrared emitting sensor. So it's basically an internal infrared light source. When you make the camera sensitive to infrared, it picks that up and it will bleed across the image. So they're oh, they're wow. not a good option for it. Okay. But all of your you, you know any of your well all of your crop sensor Sony's are great and any of the first generation full frames are great. So but that's the okay. only cameras that have any kind of an issue. Crop sensor Sony's are great. Any kind of full frame camera is great. Nikon's crops. Well, ni yep, Nikon's are great. All the all the Nikon's, all the Canons, uh, they're all phenomenal for this. Yeah, okay. they all work very well. What about Ooh. something as cheap as a fixed lens? Impossible? You, you bet. Yeah, we do modif modifications on point-and-shoot fixed lens cameras all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Wow. Crazy. Yep. So Sony came out with their, was it the, uh, well, or Nikon recently that has huge telephoto lens yeah, capabilities. Yeah. I can't remember what model that is. Um, but we have all the specs on that, and we actually have a customer sending one in this week, so we'll be doing that one this <laughs> nice. week. Nice. But it should work out very well. Nice. Awesome. Okay, well, we're going to continue the pictures that are up on the screen. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break in the podcast. I'm going to come right back after this little live ad that I'm going to do for Spencer's Cameras, and we're going to get a drink, and I'm going to break <laughs> out the Kinoto. So I'll be right back with the Photog Adventures podcast. So those of you with us live, enjoy this, hang out, grab a drink, because we're going to ask more questions of Clarence, and we're going to find out more answers about whether or not I should do it to my Canon 60, which I think I'm already convinced. It's also a pretty awesome deal. You want to grab my Kinoto, Brennan, while I do this ad? <coughs> no, it's actually in the cooler. There will be th Something will fall, so careful. Do you want a soda or anything? No, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. You bet. Brennan, you want any of those? Can you water? Um, I do. They're behind on the bottom there. You see behind the far left? They're behind that stuff. So guys, okay, real quickly, I'm going to do this with you. Sure. So Clarence, we're thinking about doing this. You want to go out and do an Astro modded camera. Someone pays, again, how much for the visual spectrum? So the visible plus H alpha is 350. Does it matter what camera body it is? On a full frame, that's what it is. Okay, no if matter it's a crop sensor, does it crop go down? Crop sensor, it's down 50 bucks. Down 50 bucks for a crop sensor. Mm -hmm. For an Astro visual, uh, the, the full, full spectrum, spectrum, it's 50 bucks less. So 50 bucks it's less. 300 for a full frame, 250 for a crop sensor. Okay, awesome. And so I'm considering doing it. I want to go to spencerscameras.com. That's the right website, right? Correct. Spen spencerscamera.com. Okay, spencerscamera.com, single mm -hmm. S on the camera. And if you go there and you decide to do it, how many weeks until you have the camera back? Um, actually, we're about a four or five day turnaround right now. Four or five day turnaround? Correct. Correct. Okay, awesome. Fantastic. So if you guys are considering doing this, go ahead and use your Photog Adventures discount code. He's going to give you $25 off actually for doing this with us if you go ahead and give the code ADVENTURE25. ADVENTURE25 will say you've been here from Photog Adventures. If you guys consider doing it, I know that's the discount I'm going to get so that I can do it on my Canon 6D, which I pretended like I'm going to think about it still, but I think I've already decided. I think I've already decided I'm definitely going to do it. Mm -hmm. So check out spencerscamera.com. All right, thanks, man. Got a Kinoto here for the live feed. So for those of you who are watching it live with us, you're talking about doing an Upper Peninsula winter listener adventure because Necktie right. Jeff says yeah. that we can enjoy going out sledding more. And I'm like, last year, I didn't have any sledding opportunities. Mm. We were going to go snowshoeing and do some awesome snow photography, and then I think we never even really got a hint. We never did, no. Of a good opportunity. No, we did a few other things instead, but, but not really... Too this much episode in the snow. brought to you by San Pellegrino Kinoto. It is delicious. It is actually really not, disgusting to everyone but me. This podcast has not been paid for in any way by them. <laughs> no one's paid for anything. Not even Spencer. Clarence Spencer. 
we asked him to come to us and he was like sure that'd be awesome and so this is a great way to talk about spencer's cameras and an awesome podcast because we're just enjoying the fact astro modified should i go astro modified for some color right so right. yeah but i love Kinoto. if you guys are ever in italy or you ever find it it's this brown caramelized deliciousness that uh, i was going to enjoy this month but now i'm not going to italy anymore we're just coming back from iceland yeah bummer got an apartment need to spend my money there next year it was always next year so we're coming back from live, and um, hey, you want to bring us back this time, Brendan? Yeah. Hey, welcome back to the Photog Adventure Podcast, guys. Uh, we are joined here with Clarence Spencer, and we're talking about Astro Modified Camera Bodies. And uh, let's see, do we have any new questions here? I want to go to Greenwood this weekend. A lot of talk about the adventure. Yeah. Um, nope, nothing really new. If you guys uh, type in, chime in, uh, let us know if you have any direct questions for Clarence here to answer uh he can answer your questions here live, and then, you know, obviously you guys can see that replay on the podcast later. Why don't you tell us about this image that's on the So screen, this, Clarence. again, up in the, is, is up in the Uinta Mountains here in Utah. Um, again, the bull sticks underneath this fallen tree in Very the water. Cool. Um, it's kind of funny. I was out I was out in the, uh, the water up to my waist, <laughs> oh, really? stacking the lights oh. in there in September. It was terrible. <laughs> Guess that's kind and of there cool. was Yeah, and there was a, uh, a uh, what do they call it? Um like a little rat in the log it kept throwing my glow sticks out didn't like them in there but anyway it was kind of funny but it <laughs> really? turned into a great and it's then hilarious. there's one lantern off to the right hand to the behind you know behind us there the, mm. to light that log up so again the little goal zero lantern is what we have very cool and that's just really the little small light no it's the little um lighthouse mini oh, okay. so they have the bigger lighthouse and then they have the little lighthouse mini and oh, that's okay. what I, have. Okay. I have found though recently they came out with one called the crush light mm -hmm. it's kind of a pop-up light oh, and yeah. it's, it's a little better for color temperature so Very if nice. you're looking at buying lighting for you know nightscape photography that gold zero crush light is very very it's cool. a little more on the yellow side a little more, more on the blue side it's right? a little warmer yeah, yeah this this one's still pretty warm but it is a little bit cooler mm -hmm. um you know in comparison to like a, a regular led panel or right. something but right. but that little gold zero crush light is is my new favorite light it's mm. very cool so cool so a lot of similar images but yeah. then we go into have we seen the difference between the two types Visual um, that's only. coming up. Yeah, that's coming up. These are all full spectrum. So all again, full spectrum yeah, examples. Is, this is full spectrum as well. It's a little bit different color temperature on this we, one. This is on the way to Eureka, isn't it? Or no, that's mm. down in Sago Canyon in southern oh, Utah. Yeah, it's not that. Mm, okay. Yeah, it's a ruin kind of like this up there, but I think it had less wall. Yeah, that's an old general store of some kind. Cool. Um, this is again full mm. a full spectrum, you know, little tiny LEDs inside this little shack, uh, and one little gold zero light off to the right. Uh, again, single exposures. They're, they're, none of these are stacked or tracked in any way. What's interesting about the visual, this, this full spectrum that I'm finding is that it kind of gives you an overall color of pink and magenta. I don't get the sense that I'm getting little targeted areas of magenta where the nebulas are. Yeah, it's, it's full, not really it's full bringing spectrum. out. Full yeah. spectrum is going to be like that. Yeah. Mm, so if you're correct. looking for something to bring out the reds in the Milky Way instead of bringing out more red of air glow or whatever's out right, there, right. you want to maybe go for the visual only. The visible plus H alpha, correct. Visible yeah. plus H alpha. I might get that by the end of the podcast. <laughs> Again, there's, there's another full spectrum <laughs> shot there down at Broken Arch and Arches. What is this? I haven't been to Broken Arch recently. It's just a little no bush on top right there. Of that. That's awesome. I, I have not been there for <laughs> <That's, laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'm like, get off of there. Don't go all Berenson on it. So, I have to talk to you about that later. So the, the, <laughs> the next two images will show you a little difference on color temperature. Um, so this is a this shot. Is bizarre. <clears throat> what's going on? The exposure well, is, really underexposed or different? Well, what's up? Um, the exposure is the same as the second the image after this. It's just a different uh, custom white balance setting. So you can see oh. the differences there. It's kind of a good comparison of the two differences. So the difference of a... One's a little cooler than the other. Wait, um, that just modify on us? Oh, one's, there you go. one's smaller. Weird. It's now on our visual screen showing it as a smaller image instead of full screen when I was going back and forth a lot. But what's happening in this one that's more blue? Is that the desired color temperature or is this the one that you set it up yourself? That's the one I, that right out of the camera. So the pinker there. one right here right. is out of the camera mm. straight. Right. I had a customer that wanted this print, but he wanted it a little cooler. So we, mm. so we changed the color temperature a little there and, 
and then printed that for him. So and that nice. looks gnarly. That's interesting. That's I just think. a post adjustment, you know. It, the it, character and texture on this on this wall yeah. of rock it really stands out in yeah. the bluer one. Yeah, it's just the north windows arch. <sighs> okay, in, yeah, uh, yeah. Arches. yeah. I do recognize it. Yeah. Sweet. And so this, this one, this the Milky Way is not visible at all. Right, right. This is a good example of the same camera with the hot mirror filter shooting during the day. So oh. it's a normal image. looks just like any other image you would take with a normal unmodified camera of the Windows Arch looking through to, mm -hmm. to um, I can't Tur remember, Turret Arch. Arch yeah. Correct, yeah. So yeah. here's a situation that's going to put you extremely on the spot, especially as the owner of a business. Mm -hmm. But let's do it. You Go ready? Ahead. Hit me. We've got Scott saying that he's had something waiting for four months now, and he hasn't gotten information about the progress and hasn't received a response about his A6000. A6000. Do you, do you guys question. remember stealing Scott's camera, or <laughs> was this something that you guys have no idea about? We, um, obviously, Scott, the Ozone guy, is not going to show up in his memory as, I remember that camera, and he probably has several A6000s. But I'll uh, have to look. Yeah, we've got to help Scott out. we got to yeah, help definitely. find out where that definitely. went. Definitely. I don't know. I have no idea. I'll have to look into that. It's probably an intern working there. Whatever it is, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll look into it and see what's going on. I know Sony, we've had a few issues getting parts from them, so there might be a delay because of something that might have been wrong with the camera. I, I'm not sure. But so a Sony part delay that. could be part of the issue, but yeah. no information, at least, that he says he hasn't heard anything about yeah, it. Four months is a long time. I'd be concerned, too. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Scott, but <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we got a chance to see that. I mean, yeah, we'll get into that. business, that's going to happen. Yeah. And so, oh, well... For the most part, Clarence, we can test it and see him how fast it comes back. And yeah, you know, unfortunately, Scott might be one of those guys who's had very bad luck with it. Hmm. So sorry about that. And we don't have we haven't shown you guys our face in the middle of that because we're just two sweating bullets over here, <laughs> scared. We don't want to show ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so um, back to this image, you use the filter of okay. Let me show the let me show the camera, Brandon, so you can show us okay. that. But I'll keep this picture up. Oh, and the mouse being on two different screens is a really challenging process for me. So you're talking about that green one or this yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, the green one there. It's kind of a bluish ah, green bluish color. Bluish green, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that goes over the Astro modified, the full or, or the visible. In order to make this picture up here, Clarence, did you use one of these two cameras? Um, no, this that picture was actually I think two years ago, so it was with the regular, the first version of the sixty. Oh, the Canon okay. sixty. So yeah. what, this this picture right here is an example of not having brought the filter back on to make it normal. This is just a picture of it before it ever gets taken. No, that that's a that's a modified camera with that hot mirror with filter, filter on. The, okay, on so the that is I am yes. understanding uh -huh. correctly. Correct. Okay, so then which one do you remember? Yeah, it was the blue. Well, it was a full spectrum, full spectrum. modified camera. It have yes. to be in order for us to use spectrum. that. No, no, you can use that filter on any of the modifications and it brings mm. it back to normal. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Interesting. And so then this is a normal shot. You see the red rock. You can see the blue. You can see everything. And so you can see how you're not giving up a camera to go modification unless you're Scott and it's still there, which is a sad story. Hopefully, Scott, this will be the beginning of the end for you, my friend. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Good timing for you to jump on. He goes, Scott Jones. Look up, look up Scott Jones. Okay. Cool. So awesome. We will look into that. So then here we go. This is balanced rock. And man, I love the misty clouds that are causing all those stars to pop. Yeah, it was kind of a hazy day, a little mm. bit of a thin overlay. Um, we had two, this is a full spectrum camera again um, with no filters. Uh, two large, LED, well, semi large LED panels way off in the distance, mm. about 300 yards way out to the right to keep the light kind of uh, more even instead of focused. Looks good. Um, again, a single exposure. Single exposure. You got the color showing up. You got the Milky Way showing up nicely. And this is what the full mod full modified? And the yeah, red the, the full rock. spectrum full mod. Spectrum uh -huh. modified. Yep. Okay. And the thing I love about this is it gives you an example of the red of the rock is still there. You're not causing a weird picture for your foreground. True. Because one of my considerations that I was going to ask you about that you've proven already is <clears throat> Am I going to have to give up my foreground shot? I might have to use no. my filter pass for a foreground shot and take it off. Single image yep. for the foreground and the sky, and it still looks like red rock. Correct. Correct. That's yes. awesome. That's great. Again, the key is setting a custom white balance, and you're good to go. Awesome. Okay. And when you say setting the white balance, you know, I like to set it at 3,800 when I take my shots at the Milky Way, but you right. can set it anywhere because you, you change it later in the raw editing process. What are you recommending? When you typically do a shot like this, are you 
at twenty five hundred. You were talking no, about twenty five hundred. No, no, we earlier. we we set the custom. We have the camera set the custom white balance. So the it, camera chooses. Correct. You use a gray card mm-hmm. image for, that you've shot during the day in full sunlight, and then the camera will do it itself, and it's very accurate. So it works oh. better that way. And then you just go to that setting. Yep. And then in, in camera raw or in Lightroom, okay. you tell it to use the as shot color temperature, and it will give you that right out of the camera. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh man, awesome. Okay, so then looking at these red rocks gives me hope that it will still look awesome. I love that picture. That's great. My kids love that area. And here's <laughs> another sense. area. Really cool how the tree bark and the greens up here in the evergreen look fantastic. You still get... Wow, okay. Is this the visual only? No, nope, this is a full spectrum. This is actually a this very is localized actually, it red. It's very cloudy. So that you can only see the Milky Way peeking through, and mm, so where like, it peeks through, it gets more red like that. Right, right. Wow. Yeah. It's like it's a beacon strip in the sky. Yeah. yeah, and I and I apologize. This is kind of a cropped image, so it's not the highest res, but it's it looks a little noisy on there because of that. Ah, mm. gotcha. Yeah, cool. <clears throat> Delicate arch, a place that I might never put in my portfolio for Milky Way photography. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah, just they, don't want to battle the zoo. The um the story behind this is uh, three years ago we went up and spent the whole entire evening with two time lapse cameras, two two time lapse mm. rigs running, and and all night long we had you know, over you know fifteen different groups come in and light it up crazy Holy and so cow. so the time lapse is kind of you know funky with all of the different right, lights but right. one guy came in and fired off a gigantic flash and so one of the frames <laughs> one of the frames in my out. time lapse was this and you know had to clean it up a little and reduce the the intensity of his flash but it turned out into a a pretty decent image Hmm. well fantastic just so you guys are aware it's 9 8 52 we're coming close to the end of the podcast those of you here live with us get ready to ask your final questions go (laughs) ahead and ask any questions you absolutely want before we let clarence go home to his family so let's go down let's see another picture oh i love this is the one without Without the light, of course. <laughs> That's right. even better, yeah. honestly. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's, it's, yeah, it's really it's cool. Yeah. yeah. If you're not on the YouTube channel watching it right now, you're not going to see how cool this picture is, where it's got a beautiful silhouette of delicate arch that reaches from the bottom right corner and then curves all the way up to the top third of the left side of the frame. <clears throat> and with it, almost mirroring that, is the arch of the Milky Way with the core kind of the yin and yang of the delicate arch taking up negative space here and the core taking up positive space there. It's just beautiful. You even got a little meteor going up in the corner there, which yeah, is a little awesome. tiny one up there in the top corner. That's sweet. <laughs> hey, yep. Spence, Clarence does not take pictures unless a meteor's happening. Apparently, he's a good meteor <laughs> photographer. <laughs> right? So Ooh, when do we get into I the like visual? This. Stop me when we get there. Oh, I love that shot. Okay, so this one, the reason I put this in as an example is this is a full-spectrum camera with no filters. Okay. Um, at sunset? It's after sunset. Okay. So once the indirect sunlight is gone, you oh. don't need the, any filtering at all the, the, because the, the infrared light source, which is the sun, right. is extremely intense. Once right. it dips below the horizon or behind clouds, this is what you get. Now, this is a three-image composite okay. for focus stacking purposes. Okay. Okay. So, you know, I focused on the rocks that are right on my feet and mm-hmm. then the spires out in the canyon and then the sky for three different images. So Is that Canyonlands or where is it? It's near Canyonlands. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cool. But that's that was shot with a 5DS Canon full spectrum, mm. um, and then the 11 to 24 Canon lens. So it's extremely wow. wide. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was this one wide? At, what really wide at 11? It was at 11. Yes, okay. at 11 mil. I wanted to get all of the rock I could below, Ooh, and it turned out great. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah I love really that. Cool. Love that focus stack shot. Yeah. So okay, this, this is gnarly. What yeah, this is an example here? of infrared photography with a full spectrum camera. Okay. It's, I think, a five-image pano um, up in Olympic National Park in the rainforest there. So just an example of a colorized um, infrared image. It's kind of unique. Can you show so. us the filter, or is there no that's, filter on this? No, that's the dark filter. The right dark filter right there. Okay. Yeah, that's this dark filter here is, is an infrared filter. So using that filter gave on the you... On a full spectrum? Using that on a full, full spectrum. spectrum. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So full spectrum modification okay. using that filter then becomes this gnarly black and white pretty much. Right. Wow. Right. What is There's the a little scene color like? coming through. Oh, I see some blue up here. Yeah, there's yeah. a little bit of blue in the sky. It's just the 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 way the the certain filter I shot with 
um, allowed some of the coloring to come through. So. And as you said earlier, there are different types of IR filters you can Correct. do that mm -hmm. will actually change the look of these Correct. images. Correct, yeah. Okay. yeah, so these are different IR images, okay. just as examples. Now this one is, oh, I love sorry, that. this one right here, this is an example of the visible plus H alpha filter. So you can ah. see you're losing some of those pinks and magentas. Mm -hmm. um, but the color of the Milky Way looks fantastic. Yes, yeah, the color looks very vivid, very, you know, yeah. more like the standard Milky mm -hmm. Way shot that you see. Right. Um, and again, the glow sticks in the water, and you know, so. So looking at some, for some of the color in this, looking for some of the detail that's going to be pulling out. Yeah. You don't necessarily pull out more of the Rofuki colors, but you are seeing colors in the up here yeah there's definitely right. some more pink in there yeah and, you're seeing and, uh, it in the lagoon you're seeing it in the other nebulas that are really really vibrant in the milky way do you have any example pictures probably not here but of doing an orion shot have you got more of bernard's loop or barnard's loop to yeah, show there, up i don't have that but there, there's an orion shot coming up as well but oh, the, the, yes uh, you know and i mentioned before that with a modified camera you pick up tons of luminosity you're okay. gaining tons of luminosity and some color gain so when you see the the Lagoon Nebula and things like that in there, you're gaining all of that extra light right. and brightness, and then you could easily just bring out the reds more as well. But you know you're gaining just more structure of everything with the modified. Yeah, camera. yeah, the detail definitely looks better yeah. than that. Yeah. Do you dodge and burn your Milky Way core in this I, shot? I did not in that one. No, I did not. And so you're getting a lot of clarity on that Milky Way versus <laughs> yeah. the sky, yeah, thanks to it. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. and the same location, um, just without the lights and the rocks. You know, yeah, so yeah. You're, interesting. So. Oh, awesome. Wow. So this cool. is a deep sky image with yeah. the full spectrum camera of the Irix or the Iris wow. uh, Nebula. So these can be used for telescope use or mm -hmm. telephoto use. Um, this is a it's actually a fairly difficult object to, to photograph, but it's it's you know. I bet it's hard. So this is with your camera hooked up to a telescope Correct. for this uh -huh. image. Okay. Correct. Yeah, that was with my five Canon five DS on on a telescope in prime focus, so looking wow. right through the through the telescope. <laughs> that is gorgeous. <laughs> it's really beautiful. Yeah. I want that as a desktop. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> So this one is interesting because you can see the moon is a little fuzzy. Mm -hmm. um, that's a single shot from my backyard with a telescope, and I had focused on the ridge line, and then as the moon came up, oh, the moon is okay. a touch fuzzy because of that. But again, that's a full-spectrum camera with no filters. And no one wow. was hiking up there at the time. Right, right. <laughs> at yeah. the peak of this mountain. Yeah. So we got a question from Kathy that says, what does the mod do with light pollution? Does it make it stranger looking? Is it Not really. It just, I mean, you're going to gain more light sensitivity overall. Mm. Um, so, you know, it, it, again, it could be a negative in a way, but um, you're also gaining intensity from other parts of the night sky. So uh, if you use a light pollution filter with a modified camera, the light that is coming through, the camera is more sensitive to that. So there's a benefit. Okay. <clears throat> Have you used the um, the light pollution filter that is from Starry Starry Night? No, what's his? Um, You're talking about Ian's Ian's company. Yeah, Ian Norman Lonely yeah, Spec. Lonely spec. Yeah, I haven't tried that one yet. No, I have a but customer. Filter. Yeah, I have a customer that's tried it and he loves it. Okay. Um, you know, any anybody east of you know the Rockies, they have light pollution issues right. almost everywhere, and so right. they're dealing with that all the time. So. <laughs> I've shot with some light pollution filters a fair amount just for testing purposes. But I can't stand them, of course, because your exposures get much longer because you're limiting light. Right, but, right. Um, yeah. they, they work very well with modified cameras. Cool. This picture is beautiful, man. I love it. That is, yeah. <laughs> so this is another deep sky image with a telescope. It's the Rosette. Or sorry, not the Rosette. Uh, I forget what this one's called. Yeah, I don't know the name myself. I can't remember. <clears throat> but, that's um, just awesome. Wow. So and then I think Orion's coming up. Oh, there's Andromeda. <sighs> so that that was with a Canon 100 to 400 millimeter lens. That's only the 100 to 400. Yeah. How much did you crop yeah. in? I mean, a lot. Not at all, actually. Not at That's all. That's just a 400 millimeter. Yeah, yeah. The the um, Andromeda Galaxy is huge. Whoa. It was on a crop sensor camera, so it's equivalent oh, okay. of about 600. Okay, okay, right. okay, okay. And so, it is because I mean, what we see, mm -hmm. we see this with our naked eye. Right. But it stretches. Long yeah, it's huge. Idea. It's and I these think are two four, other galaxies right here. Yeah, I think it's actually like four or five times wider M31. than the full moon. Oh. So, so the Andromeda galaxy is really large, actually. So yeah. And what was the? Incredible. Do you remember the exposure? This was on a telescope tracking mount, so it oh, okay. was 
um, you know, it, it was probably a two minute exposure okay. and, and I think I did five of them and stacked them, Okay. you know, to get all that extra uh, color out of there. You have wow. to stack some stuff. So with the so. regular 100, 400 millimeter mm -hmm. crop sensor and on a, on a mount that rotates, that's correct. An equatorial, it was on an equatorial right. telescope. Man, it was on a cheaper lower end mount when I shot this one, but yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, man, it's gorgeous. So... Yeah. Um, Gabe points out this is the cocoon. cocoon nebula. That's correct. Oh, yeah. Cocoon, cocoon nebula. nebula. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So anyone's looking yep. up there, getting your Messier object. Yep. It's the cocoon nebula. Yeah. There you go. Great to be here. There's the Sean. rosette. This wow. is the rosette nebula. This yeah. was again with a telescope, you know, but um, it just kind of shows you what these modified cameras can do. And the thing to point out is, guys, if you do this, okay, let me just tell you visually. Let me talk to you. To do this same kind of photography that's right here. You're going to have to stack different layers of images and then bring out your red and do the LRGB processing method. And you have to put it through hours and hours and hours, something like 10 to 30 hours of post-processing. I know you probably still spent a lot of time for this image right here, but the reds that show up is all thanks to having your astro modification. Correct. Correct. I mean, it yeah, makes this, it so much easier. This image actually, I only spent maybe thirty minutes on for wow. in post. So it's that is very, great. I'm I'm kind of impatient, lazy, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's I only agree. five images shot. Where you know most of your astrophotographers will shoot thirty or forty, and then dark frames and you know all kinds of extra work. And this only had I think five light frames and then five dark frames. Um, and when you say dark frames, can you clarify that? So, so a dark a frame, yeah, dark frame is basically you put the lens cap on the camera and shoot the equivalent exposure, equi equivalent ISO, everything, okay. and then you use those uh, to to remove. It helps remove noise. Noise, okay, so it, okay. It so it's just looking at noise patterns, correct? And just looking at that and then information, it removes saying, the okay. patterns. Yes, that's correct. Ah, so. okay. I've always wondered about that. Okay, so that's good to know. Cool. So Mendez joins us, and this is a little self-satisfying for us, Brendan, but he says, yeah. love your works. I'm a subscriber, new to photography, and I've learned so much from your channel. Hi from Wollongong, Australia. Awesome. awesome. So we've had a cool. reminder that Canberra exists, <laughs> that it's yeah. not, it's actually the capital of Australia, right. and now we've got Wollongong, Wollong, Wollongong, Wollongong, Wollongong. who knows? It's nice. awesome. The billabong, awesome. shove that jib jab in your billabong, how's it go? <laughs> You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me, something like that. And Wollongong is the home of that song, probably, nice. because it has a thousand syllables. So, freaking awesome, Mendez, that you're here with us. So glad. And Sean, I've seen Sean following us forever. I love Sean yeah. and his own work. So, yeah. sweet. So then, if you're going to go and do deep sky photography, which one of these cameras is someone saying, I need to make sure I have X? So, deep sky photography, my recommendation would be the full spectrum camera. So you just gain so much only. light. Yeah, the Visible Plus H Alpha is comparable to like the D810A Nikon or the Canon 60DA. Okay. okay. The sensitivity is similar to that, but you gain so much more light capturing capability with the full spectrum. That's all I ever shoot. Okay. That's all I ever shoot. Cool. And this one right here is a full frame camera, so you Correct. use a mm -hmm. crop sensor. What was your crop that you used for that? Uh, it was the Canon 80D that I shot the on. 80D. That one. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a great really little camera. And Fantastic. I got to go back to that picture I because I used the 60D I and I had a lot of fun with the 60D. And then, uh, so I was, I was yeah, for imagine all, the 80D a being much better. It is a cleaner, yeah, yeah it's a lot better camera. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to be filling yeah, up the image. walls in my house with these kind of deep sky shots yeah. eventually. If you guys need a YouTube channel for deep sky photography, go to Astro Backyard. Yeah, I thought I was going to do one and then Astro Backyard did it. He's awesome. And I pretty much years away from being able to teach it <laughs> so it's what an amazing stuff deep sky astrophotography <laughs> love it hey sean said he's spreading the word about us all hey, awesome thanks, sean. well then don't waste any more time listening to us right now get back to work spreading the word no just kidding <laughs> sean that's awesome that you told anyone at all Ooh, Ooh, these are star nurseries right here, guys. That yeah, is this, awesome. This actually is not my image. Thank you, Mary it's a client. Uh, this is an image uh, a client of mine took up in Calgary. Oh, wow. Um, but it's a beautiful image. This was with a Canon 6D full spectrum. Okay. Um, I think he did shoot, I think, around a dozen to 15 images for this. I'm trying to recognize mm. where this is. This I'm not sure what this one is. I don't recall. That is great, recall. though. I mean, this is a lot of what you see when you get really detailed shots of the Orion Nebula area, yeah. but it's much more bright. Mm. Orion Nebula is hugely, much more bright than this. Yeah, there's an and Orion the shot Fuki coming up. But details. This, uh. this one, in fact, the Roa Fuki is uh, coming up as well. Yeah. So, oh, right there, there it is. Oh, yeah. That is 
I, I, I know the that I want to thinking about <laughs> I want to think about this color, but I just the star field, like you said, yeah, it's just it's incredible. It, it's the so pinpoints. This is with a Canon 6D oh. as well, so you know there there's a lot there are a lot of astrophotographers, deep sky imagers anyway, that are shooting CCDs or you know uh, smaller specific mm. telescope mm-hmm. cameras. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, this just kind of goes to show that you can get phenomenal images with a, a DSLR. So I got to zoom in on this. I think I got the mouse cursor on the right side. Yeah. No. Well, here I go. I got to zoom in. <sighs> yeah. It's you know, pretty incredible how many stars and just pinprick. You know, there's also a lot of people that um, tell you, you know, full spectrum cameras will give you star bloat. Mm. Do you see well, any star so bloating? Does- Mm. Every lens I've ever used right. has a star so that, bloat. Right, so that's the thing is star bloat really 99% of the lens, time right? is a lens problem. Right, it's yeah. It's because of bad optics. Mm. Um, this was shot with a regular <sighs> reflective telescope, a standard, I think it was an 8-inch cheaper Celestron. So, no, let's see, it was not. It was... Um, six inch i think it was a very inexpensive telescope so it's, wow but you can see there is no star bloat and this is a full spectrum camera so right. it's kind of a, a misnomer a little bit of misinformation on on full spectrum good to know don't harsh on the full spectrum guys because it's not causing your star bloat nope. you need to have that's a optics. diet that's with your optics lenses issue. It's an optic get issue. rid of all that fatty dollar bills that you have because you need to have a diet for a better lens to get the bloat gone oh, this is amazing <laughs> throw a few key complex the whole yeah. the all those dark veins dark dark, dark dust lanes coming up yep. here and pointing to it it's just i it's love our cool. i love our galaxy and our solar yeah, system oh cool my image. dad's our solar system is boring compared to our galaxy, but our solar system is amazing that it has life. So that guy sits right under the Eagle Nebula. Mm. He's talking about something specific. That's the heaven. Agreed, Scott. <laughs> as soon yeah. as you get your camera back, Scott, you're going to take this picture with yours. Oh, my gads. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, am I on the wrong screen? I am. I want to go to the next picture. Yep, there you go. There's the Orion Ooh, Nebula. There's your Orion wow. shot. That's a full spectrum. Uh, actually, it's that was such shot. A different color. That was shot with an A7R Sony okay. um, before the Mark II came out. Um, but it's a beautiful image. That beautiful is image. gorgeous. And there's so much you can do with them. I mean, you and that was a telescope a shot, or this was a, a small, I think, a 80 millimeter refractor. Okay. Uh, telescope. So. And you can get I mean, basically the same image with, you know, a good telephoto lens. So. Mm-hmm. You know, our stunned silence does not make a good podcast, but it, man, it's just it's, too good. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. I just want more detail. It's amazing. I mean, I mean you, you could definitely get this kind of an image with a, a basic tracker that everyone uses for Milky Way shots mm-hmm. um, and a good, you know, a, a decent telephoto lens. You could get an image like this very easily. Mary Beth Ooh. says it all. These are just... Mm, amazing. <laughs> yep, she doesn't exactly. say amazing. I added that, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I know she meant it. Okay, so, so this is has its benefits, I guess. Yeah, this was um, actually two years ago. We had this an early bizarre. snowstorm. How the, yeah. Okay, I was gonna say, how did you get a vertical Milky Way with the core visible and snow? Yep, but this it was, was an early believe, snowstorm. I believe it was September twenty fourth, uh, two years ago. Oh, wow. There was a f- kind of a freak early snowstorm came That's through, right. very deep yes, too. I remember that. And I drove up to the Uintas, found this spot. You went to the Uintas mm-hmm. after the snowstorm. Yeah, in you fact, went, like, it was cloudy. The most difficult place probably yep. to go at that time yep i knew the highway was still open <laughs> wow. drove up there oh, wow. the, i was pushing 12 inches of snow on the road nobody else up there I'm and sure. the clouds part you could see the clouds off to the left yeah, they parted yeah. perfectly before the core was gone and and oh, that's great you know shot a couple of good shots but this looks that impossible because it's not tilted over on its side yet for our hemisphere right, right. Our, and it's not it's not at a, a panorama low angle like it would in the early <clears throat> spring. It still has snow. Right. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly late summer Milky Way with snow. Yep. Yep. That's great. That is bizarre. Well, that's when, when the snowstorm came through, I was thinking, you know, I've never seen a good Milky Way shot with snow in the Especially northern hemisphere. Especially with a good six inches unless of snow. Unless it's like a right. panorama right. and low. low right, or unless it's kind of, you know, a composite where people mm. have taken different times of the year. Liars. So when it snowed, I thought, I better get up there, and it just cleared up beautifully. There's some, You can see all that air glow ripples through in the bottom as well. Yeah. Again, this is a color, kind of an artistic choice of mine to go with these colors, more of a cold. Monochromatic because, look. Yep, and because of the coldness of the scene, and so... 
That's that was awesome. my my personal choice. There. <laughs> That's beautiful. So, this picture has won the night. I mean, yeah, it's awesome. It's a good shot. I like and it's one. the last yeah, one. I thought I didn't. Yeah. Okay, that's amazing. So you guys, you have your last chance to ask the questions of Clarence Spencer. Brendan and I are going to finalize Ask Ours. Let's do a gear time with this. Let's talk specifically about these filters okay. and the cost of everything. Okay, so so the mods again, oh, Brendan, 350 to 300, camera. depending on what choice you go there. There are other options as well. So um, when the cameras are modified, um, almost every camera out there today has a, a sensor cleaning mechanism that shakes yes. the sensor yeah. at an ultrasonic um, frequency. That's all removed when you do the modification. And for oh. years, we didn't really know how to reinstall that. But about a year oh, and a half ago, okay, we figured negative. out a good way to reinstall it. Oh, so so now cool. we charge an extra 50 bucks to do that because of the time involved. Mm -hmm. So we can reinstall the sensor cleaner. So okay. that helps shake the dust off. That's all back. It can all be reinstalled just like before. Very cool. Um, and then we also have a heat sink that we can install to help disperse the heat away from the imaging sensor. That's an extra charge as well. Um, that's extremely helpful for especially the deep sky imagers or yeah, time because, lapse shooters. Yeah, because when you're video. doing, yeah, that's mm -hmm. the thing is that heat builds up, right? And you if bet. you have you a shot of going, <clears throat> if you have, if you're on an equatorial mount and you're exposing for two whole minutes, or you're doing right, time or lapse, or you're mm -hmm. doing 200 images. By the end of those sequence of 200, 400, 500 images, whatever your time yep. lapse is, your sensor is getting warmer and warmer right. and warmer, That's right. and creating more yep. and more noise or correct. dead pi or hot That's pixels correct. or all kinds of crazy stuff, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so we can install a heat sink on the back side of the imaging sensor. It helps disperse the heat away. Um, there that are is awesome. there, we've uh, we're kind of testing the, in the very early testing phases of a uh, an actual active um, cooling system. Oh that yeah, will like cool a little the fan sensor. that would be on there. Yeah, it's it's okay. actually it, well, it's I don't want to tell too much about it yet, but yeah, don't. <laughs> um, it, it would be something you could plug into like a USB power supply. It would definitely take oh. some power. It would stay away from the camera's uh, internal power itself. Okay. Um, but it would cool uh, the sensor down to into the negative Celsius wow. degrees. So for the the extreme guys that want to shoot uh, deep field stuff. Um, that's an added benefit we're going to have. Available. So you really could do like a five minute, 10 minute exposure. Yeah. In fact, you know, really I've, awesome with that. I've done a lot of five to 10 minute exposures with deep sky stuff and okay. it's, and you know, you do start to get some noise, but with the heat sink that we install now, it helps a lot. Wow. Um, awesome. with time lapses, there's definitely a benefit with the heat sink. Um, the longer your time lapse runs, the hotter that sensor gets. Mm -hmm. And, you know, videographers that are doing stuff, I've done some IR video and things True, like that. Yeah, it all, it all helps. Also, yep. 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 It's a ton of heat so. when you're running video. Mm -hmm. I mean, we notice on the phones too, guys. And you're running video, and your phone <laughs> says it's too hot. It's you gotta yeah, cool yeah. down. And you're yep. just like, really? Yep. <laughs> yeah. So when you look at these two things, full, yep. fifty full dollars spectrum. less. So it's three hundred dollars mm -hmm. or two fifty only. Two. That's three hundred for this. Uh -huh. Full camera, two fifty. Crop sensor would be two hundred. Would be two. No, the full full frame is three hundred. Crop sensor is two fifty. Okay, three hundred okay. for the full frame, two fifty. Mm -hmm. Then it's three fifty for the HF of visible. Right, correct. And mm -hmm. this is three hundred for the crop. For a crop, correct. All right, and correct. then you get twenty five extra dollars off of that using right. the Adventures twenty or Adventure twenty five code. Ooh, I wrote that wrong. Adventure twenty five. Just go one adventure. Photog adventure. 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 Yep. Go out on an adventure twenty five times. So that's what we ask everyone to do every year. Cool. And then, then the filters, um, they aren't very cheap, to be honest with you. They're very expensive to have manufacture, but we do give you 20% off the, any filter or as many as you want to buy if you're doing a modification. So you can buy these so, through your right. site? <clears throat> right, oh. and we do sell the cameras as well. We sell new and some used cameras, so if you want a brand new you know, uh, Canon 60 Mark II like these, we have them in stock and can oh, awesome. ship one out within three or four days. Cool. We modify them to your specifications and then ship them out. Now, have you guys messed with the 5D Mark IV? Oh, many already? times. Yeah, it's okay. a phenomenal camera. Yep, we've done all of the Canons. Um, I've seen some specifications on the new Canon mirrorless that's being announced, I think, tomorrow. Oh, okay. um, and from what I've seen, it'll be a phenomenal camera for this, too. Great. It'll be great. That sounds exciting. Yep. So I'm trying to find my mouse just so I can show you guys Spencer's site so we can see some of these things for real. So let's close the preview, nice. and I'm going to get Chrome up. 
I guess it is already up playing this. I'm going to have to move this window again. But talking about the filters, did you give a price? I stopped listening when I tried to pull this I, I up. didn't mention, so it, it depends on the size. The bigger, the more expensive, just because our, our pure cost or base cost is more. Mm-hmm. But typically for a, like a 77 millimeter, this is a 95, so it's pretty big oh, for the huge. IRIX yeah, lens. Okay. But, you know, a 77 or an 82 is around $110 for a filter, but okay. then we give you 20% off of that. Okay. Very so. cool. Awesome. You guys are watching me go to my computer now and change Chrome and show you guys. In fact, I'm just going to go. Oh, and I put that just out of my reach. And Chrome. And a new window. Oh, it's going to fight me. It's going to fight me. Awesome. So when people are considering doing this, what do they need to have you know? I mean, what do they sign up and tell you? I have this camera, and then it just charges them that cost, and they ship it to you? Do yeah, you have yeah. Special there's shipping considerations? Nope. If anything in the U.S., we there's a coupon code on the top of the website that is free return shipping. So you get it to us, and then we send it back with no shipping charge standard. Uh, we do offer a rush service as well. So if you need something you know, back to you very, very quickly, we can do that. So... Um, you know, you can, if you click on the little hamburger menu tab there, uh, the hamburger menu tab. I haven't heard someone call that in a long time, but yeah, yeah, the hamburger, whatever it is. Wave designers calling it the hamburger menu. So you click on there, and then uh, there's shopping. Click on shopping right there in the top. Okay. Oh no, go back. I guess it's buying cameras from you. Yeah, up above. The up above, right there, it says shopping. Right there, click that. Oh, I did. It took oh, me here. That's weird. I think it's because I'm on... Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. There's something weird. So oh, here's... Yeah, so go down. Um, then there's astral conversions right there. Astral there. conversions. So then you would basically select, you know, whether it's Nikon, Canon, whatever. Okay. Um, and go into that. And then there's a drop down for your model and the filter types and all of the different options there. So... Cool. Canon SLR. Do, do, yeah. do, do, information right here. Look at that extra special price right now. Yes. And then you just choose in the drop down all the choices that you yep. want to actually Correct. do. If I want to go for the extra cost to have you guys fix the ability to shake it off and clean my, right. my sensor, stuff like that. Awesome. Okay. Well, then any questions Sean come M through? comes in real quick. He says, uh, sorry, I'm late, but the filters available. All their filters available for the Rokinon lens. Um, oh, right. So, yeah, we do have. In fact, over there on that chair, there's a filter case, <laughs> a big black one underneath Love there. That. So we do, we do provide the hot mirror filters um, for, you know, the larger Lee filter type, type of a holder or like this Haida filter. So, oh, right. So right. we do have the 150 millimeter yeah, hot mirror the filters for these. It's going to cost users. you a lot of money, so, sure. So I've shot the, yeah. you know, with this on my Canon 11 to 24 a lot with that hot mirror during the day, right. and it works, works beautifully. So Cool. I'm really anxious for the new Canon drop-in filter adapter. I think that's going to solve a lot of problems with this. That's going to be fantastic, yeah. yeah. It'll be phenomenal. Very so. cool. Okay, awesome. Well, if you guys are interested in this, you guys can always check back. Go to spencerscamera.com. Go to his website. You can learn more. You can check him out on our listener group if you're already in there. Spencer Clarence Spencer is a member. He's on this side. He is a member of our listeners group, so you guys can bother him there as well. He'll be able to answer some questions, but you know, don't inundate him with anything. But uh, <laughs> we're stoked to have had you. Thank you so much, Clarence. Where can people find your photography if they want to check it out? Just go to spencerscamera.com. Yep, spencerscamera.com. There's a, a gallery section on there that has everything, or on facebook.com slash spencerscamera, or Instagram is at spencerscamera. Okay, awesome. I know he's on Instagram because I just saw that picture that he posted today. It's yeah, yeah pretty awesome. a little snowy one. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. So thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, everyone who listened to the podcast. Remember that we will be back later this week from Scotland doing our review of the August challenge, the August challenge of having the mo- Milky Way with, with Milky Motion. Way. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So cool. we'll be back doing that judgment with Jeff and, and we'll have maybe Kirk as well as James with us for the judgment. So we'll go through yeah. that. And you guys will see us live as much as we possibly can from the Faroe Islands. And we'll have some other stuff that's coming out. So, uh, yeah, keep checking in. Photog Adventures will be out in Europe for the next two, three weeks. Yep. So then uh, last thing would be Listener Adventure up in Oregon. Pay attention to that. I'll be posting that on our website. You guys can see more information there. But there's lots of time between now and November 5th. So just find a way to get out there and join us. Worry about your flight there. And then just find out where we're going to be the day of. Because that's all you really need. So awesome. 
Thank you, guys. Thank you, Clarence. Thanks yep. for listening to the Thanks podcast. For me. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> Thanks so for joining us, guys. We'll see you guys in another few days, actually, really soon. So now with this situation of having a mouse and being live, I have to find the mouse again <laughs> so that I can actually say goodbye. But the podcast is still recording. Where's the mouse? Do you see it movement anywhere? Oh, I just uh, saw uh, it. Uh, okay. uh, there you go. Ah, uh, right found it. Awesome. Great to see you all on Hurricane Watch. Peace. <laughs> hey, Sean. Sorry that you're in that situation. I'm still jealous with Cat. Kathy's still jealous with Faroe Islands, but she doesn't have to be jealous because she could have been there with us. Maybe next year. Join Darn us next wedding. year. Darn wedding got in the yeah, way. Yeah. And then Rob makes fun of my keyboard saying it looks way too small. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys, again for joining us. See you guys next time.